This is a Fox News alert. The North Korean regime appears to be moving toward a nuclear test on Saturday. That would be defying warnings, explicit ones, from the Trump administration of a possible preemptive strike if they attempt to execute the test. Good evening. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Saturday is the birthday of Kim Il-sung. He is the founder of North Korea and an object of religious veneration. And if any day is likely to see some explosions, it is that one. It's already Saturday morning on the Korean Peninsula. So the test or a U.S. strike could conceivably come at any time. North Korea's military has issued a statement warning it would annihilate American troops in South Korea, quote, within minutes if it is attacked. It's hard to find anyone who really knows what's going on there inside the Hermit Kingdom, but Michael Malice is a top contender, if anyone is. He wrote a biography of Kim Jong-il, Kim Un's father, and the country's previous dictator. Michael Malice joins us tonight. Michael, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. So, from a non-expert point of view, this looks ominous, almost scary. Is it? Do we have reason to be really concerned? We have absolute reason to be concerned. North Korea has been preparing for 70 years with the idea that the U.S. imperialists, how they refer to us, are going to come back and finish the job that we started in the Korean War. So this is part of their mythology. Children have to wait outside the library at night waiting for U.S. spies. So this is something they've been prepping for for decades. So we know that they are paranoid and warlike and they have an enormous military. What is their aim? What do they want? Uh, the regime wants to hold on to power at any cost necessary. During the 90s when the famine hit, the UN was expelled from North Korea because Kim Jong-il said if we have the UN feeding our people, they won't need the government and up to 10% of the population starved. So when you look at Libya, if you look at Iraq, if you look at Slobodan Milosevic and Romania, when these regimes go down, the people at the top are personally killed. So Kim Jong-un has a very vested interest in maintaining his hold on power even if he doesn't believe in the system anymore. So wouldn't, and, and he does seem evil, but in some ways a rational actor. He's consolidated power as a very young man. Doesn't that suggest restraint? I mean, an attack on South Korea wouldn't help him, would it, or would it? Well, I, it w absolutely would not help him because, but at the same time, if his back's against the wall, he's going to go down fighting. Uh, his father, Kim Jong-il, got the supreme commander role, according to the mythology, because Kim Il-sung, the great leader, the founder, said, what do we do if we lose? And Kim Jong-il said, if we lose, we will destroy the world. And Kim Il-sung said, spoken like a true supreme commander. So part of their mythology is you have to live with the spirit of the bullet and the bomb and lay down your life on behalf of the leader. So these people are not going down without a fight. The Pyongyang metro is the deepest metro in the world because it's a bunker in case of a nuclear right. strike. A huge percentage of their uh, infrastructure is subterranean. They have been waiting for years and it's in, they're taught it in schools that we're going to come back and kill them all. How do you think they'll react to feeling cornered to the ultimatum laid down by the Trump administration? I, I'm absolutely terrified because you remember President Trump during the campaign said, if someone hits you, you've got to hit him back harder. And that's their right. exact mentality. And they're under, they have no allegiance to anyone. The scariest part is there are 100 to 200,000 people in concentration camps in North Korea right now. You can see the camps on Google Earth. And the people right. in these camps are told explicitly and constantly, if the U.S. imperialists invade, we will kill you all and burn these camps down. So if there's an attack, we might be looking at genocide within one day. So we have a lot of American troops, of course, in South Korea, right. and the North Korean government has said, as we said in the intro, they will be killed immediately. Is that a plausible threat? Could they do that? Absolutely. Seoul was Seoul is the capital of South Korea. Of course. We, we divided the Koreas right directly north of Seoul after World War II. So for them to strike Seoul, which is 10 million people with a nuclear weapon, would be absolutely easy to do. And Kim Jong-il boasted that he turned North Korea into a hedgehog with spines in every direction by which he meant missiles. And that a hedgehog can't be attacked by any larger animal. So this has been their idea for a very long time. So the assumption, I think, of a lot of people in Washington is that China will prevent this from happening, that, they're the, that North Korea is a client state and it's not in the Chinese interest to allow this to happen. Is that true? Do they have control over the North Korean government? No, China has been leading on them and trying to get them to calm down for a very long time. And North Korea revels in the fact that they're a country the size of Pennsylvania and they basically give the finger to China, Russia, Japan, the U.S. imperialists, and South Korea. So China can't really control them either. The only thing they've done is in the 70s when they built a 70-story statue of Kim Il-sung in Pyongyang and played it in gold, China said this isn't what communism is about, so they changed it to bronze. So uh, Kim Jong-il said the Chinese system won't work here. We're Korean. Our systems are for us. And they call themselves a shrimp among whales, by which they love the fact that they're small, scrappy guys taking on the big boys. Yeah. And they're, they're legitimately tough. I mean, there's, there's kind of no doubt about that. So finally, what, what's the right call at this point? I mean, obviously, the West doesn't want to see a hydrogen bomb in the possession of the North Korean government. That's what they're moving toward, apparently. Right. 
How do you stop them from doing that without provoking a confrontation like this? Anyone who says there's an easy good answer here is not telling the truth. The Chinese don't want 24 million people who have never seen a computer who don't speak Chinese crossing the Tumen River and setting up uh, camp in Manchuria. So it's right. a nightmare situation with no uh, simple answer. Is there any answer? I, How about I, a complex I, answer? It's, it's, it's going to have to be some kind of Marshall Plan between China, Russia, Japan, South Korea, and us working together. And uh, it's, it's, they're not going to relinquish their hold on power uh, voluntarily. Horrifying. Yeah. You, you didn't make me feel better, Michael, but I appreciate the information. That was really interesting. Thanks, Tucker.